We begin this hour in Iowa. That's where voters will brave the cold for the first contest in the 2024 presidential election. The state's caucuses will be held tonight, and the top three candidates are making their final push to win over voters. The only way we're going to win the majority of Americans is if we elect a new generational leader and leave the negativity and the baggage behind and move forward with the solutions of the future. That is going to take somebody who, yes, comes from the outside, isn't bought and paid for, with fresh legs, who is not yet wounded in that war. We're just getting warmed up here, but I think we've done it right here. We showed up, we answered the questions, we shook the hands, um, and people know who tried to earn it and who didn't and who okay. thinks they're entitled to it. And with your vote, we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden. We're going to take back our country. We're going to make America great again. The latest Des Moines Register poll shows former President Donald Trump with an overwhelming lead. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis are fighting for second place. And a new CBS News poll has Trump with an even larger national lead with 69% of the projected GOP vote. Ed O'Keefe is on the ground for us in Des Moines with more on this. Ed, good morning. Chanel and Nancy, good morning. At stake tonight are the first 40 of 2,429 delegates Republicans award to their national convention and the eventual presidential nominee. The hope is to build enough momentum here in Iowa for the rest of the campaign. But the concern is those sub-zero temperatures outside could keep people from showing up tonight. Amid record cold temperatures, Iowans came out for one last chance to see Republican presidential candidates before the caucuses Monday night. I'm so excited about uh, y'all being here in, in spite of the cold. Brave the weather and go out and save America. This is truly cold, but we're going to keep on going. With temperatures below zero on Sunday, Patty Sint and her husband came out to see Nikki Haley. Why are you willing to come out in these sub-zero temperatures to see the governor? <laughs> because we are undecided. The frozen temperatures forced former President Donald Trump to scrap most of his weekend schedule. He spent Sunday visiting firehouses and demanding supporters show up today. You can't sit home. If you're sick as a dog, you say, darling, I gotta make it. Even if you vote and then pass away, it's worth it, remember? The Iowa Republican caucuses require mandatory in-person attendance. It's not gonna be that many people in the grand scheme of things so your vote matters. There are more than 1,600 individual caucuses held statewide. Only registered Republicans can participate. Newcomers are welcome, but must register with the GOP on site. This is our chance in Iowa to make a difference. Carla Succo is among the newcomers. A former independent, she registered Republican and plans to vote for Haley amid concerns about Trump. So for you, you're willing to come out in the bitter cold to stop Donald Trump, is what I'm hearing you say. I will. I've been home since Thursday, <laughs> snowed in for two days, and the cold, I mean, you just dress warm, and that's not, that's not a big deal to me. Important to keep in mind, this caucus happens at one specific time, 7 p.m. local, and the last time there was a competitive caucus in this state back in 2016 for Republicans, only about 186,000 people showed up. The hope was that more would show up this time. But given the weather, all the campaigns in the state party now concede. That may not happen. We'll see. Chanel and Nancy. Ed, thank you. And our Robert Costa joins us now from Iowa with more analysis. Uh, Bob, always good to see you. Good morning to you. Uh, Donald Trump there maintaining a sizable lead right now in the Iowa polls. What is his strategy, his approach going into tonight? He wants to try to wrap up this nomination as soon as possible, but it, it may not be easy. If there is a, a large slice of the Republican electorate that's looking for an alternative, we'll, see, we'll start to see at least a glimmer of that tonight. Should Nikki Haley or Florida Governor Ron DeSantis do better than expected, maybe getting closer to Trump uh, than the recent polls have shown? And that could give someone like Haley momentum going into New Hampshire. We're also trying to watch tonight the bigger picture. How are Republican voters responding to the former president who has used such incendiary rhetoric in recent months on race and immigration and on political revenge? And if they shrug that off, that will reveal a lot about where the Republican Party is and their willingness to go with Trump once again. And Bob, you've spoken to some GOP donors about Nikki Haley. Uh, this is someone who's really been rising in the polls recently. Talk about what all this momentum means heading into tonight. 
I've also spoken with Trump in recent days, and he told me that he sees the campaign trail as essentially one and the same when it comes to his battles in the courthouse, whether it's at the civil court in New York or at the federal level in the criminal cases upcoming on January 6th and the federal trial on the classified records and his handling of those. And so what we're looking at here is Republican voters who in many respects like Trump, uh, but there are some who wonder, does he have, to use Nikki Haley's word, too much chaos? And as the governor of Florida told CBS Mornings today, that maybe it's time to get, get a more conservative, younger direction, uh, an opportunity inside the Republican Party. And Bob, turning now to Ron DeSantis, who has poured a lot of time, a lot of money into Iowa over the past few months, what could it mean for his campaign, for him, if he doesn't do well tonight? The question is, what does that mean, do well? It's going to be how it's defined by voters. The press, we matter a little bit, but not we're not much uh, in terms of expectations or assessment. But does DeSantis, if he thinks that Trump underperforms tonight, let's say he thinks Trump's around 39 percent or 40 percent, and DeSantis is able to break 20 percent and keep it within 10, 15 points, does DeSantis see that as enough to carry on to New Hampshire, to South Carolina? Uh, right now, it's a very fluid moment politically. A lot can change in less than 24 hours. These results could push DeSantis to move toward exiting the race, or it could keep him in for another month or the whole long stretch. So everyone's watching tonight and trying to figure out whether it's Haley or Trump or DeSantis or Vivek Ramaswamy, what do the results mean? How are their skeptics and critics going to interpret them? How will they interpret them? And where's kind of the balance in between? And Bob, we know that you're inside in a swarm coffee shop right <laughs> now, but we also know what the weather looks like outside. So how might all this impact voter turnout tonight? You, you shouldn't be surprised. I'm going to say it could depress turnout. Cold weather uh, traditionally keeps some people home, especially if they have to deal with health ailments or uh, physical issues. They're not going to try to risk it on the, the black ice outside on the sidewalks here. At the same time, if you go to so many local restaurants here in the Des Moines area, they have newspaper clippings from Iowa caucuses from the past up on the wall. They take politics seriously here. They love these caucuses. They don't like that the Democrats aren't having a caucus this time around in Iowa. And so they want to protect the institution. So as much as it's cold here, Iowans understand cold. They've dealt with cold before. This isn't a snowstorm in Florida. It's a snowstorm in Iowa. And I do expect some rather sturdy turnout in many parts of the state. All right, Bob, thanks so much. <laughs>